Okay, well, I think we're live now. So, hello everyone. Hello. Um, I'm Marie from My Great Paris. Uh, you probably saw me in different videos, and I'm here with Alexandre. Hello, nice to meet you. So, Alexandre used to work for My Great Paris for a long time in the office, and he's also a guide. And tonight, we're gonna discover Sarla in the Dordogne region. Uh, but uh, maybe you can tell a little bit more about you, Alexandre. So, yeah. So, you're coming from here, right? I mean, you're yeah, born here. Yeah, I grew here. up there. I was born in Perrieux, the, the city next to here. And I went to school here in Sarla, so this is basically my town. And I'm super, super happy to make you discover this pretty town. Okay, um, so how long did you stay here? Like for many years you lived here? Yeah, I grew up there from five, uh, five years old until I went to university, to college. So wow, almost okay. 15 years there, yeah. And then you came in Paris and uh, now we're back here because it's holiday time. So yeah. we can enjoy summer in France and summer in Georgia. And I'm bringing Parisians to my beautiful region to make them Thank Love you, <laughs> thank you for the invitation. Okay, so we're gonna have a great fun tonight. Um, so we are right in the middle of Sala, isn't it? Yeah, we are okay. basically in the, in the main street of Sala. This is uh, kind of the Champs Elysees of Sala. Okay, wow. And so uh, what we're gonna do is we're gonna focus on the medieval part of the city, mm -hmm. uh, where we're gonna enter in a few minutes. Okay. And uh, yeah, that's pretty much it. Uh, Sala is uh, the most beautiful town in the area. Yes. And um, and it's basically the capital city of Dordogne and Périgord, which okay. is uh, basically the same. So don't get confused if I'm saying Périgord and Dordogne, it's basically the same region. Okay, so Périgord. So for the people who... Uh, uh, maybe you can yeah, show it's written yeah. there actually. Yeah, I, I so saw you, that right here. So Périgord. And, um, so maybe I'm wrong, but I heard there is many different Périgord. Or there is like a black Périgord and other types yeah, of Périgord. Yeah, so basically in the Périgord region you can have four different Périgord. Okay. So we are right in the middle of the black Perigord. Mm -hmm. Why black? Because here there were a lot of truffles. Truffles! Wow! Mm. So we are in the middle of black Perigord. There is also red Perigord for the wine near Bergerac. Okay. There is the white Perigord because there are um, cliffs of clay mm -hmm. in the north of the Perigord. And the last one is the green one because there are a lot of fields and uh, fruit trees as well. Great, okay, so wine and truffle, that's a great yeah. region to start with. <laughs> okay, so let's discover Sarla and follow yeah, so you. Yes, let's go. Okay. We're gonna enter the medieval city. And so basically to to get uh, to get really a little bit introduced with the Middle, middle Ages. So it's basically the longest period of history. Mm -hmm. Why? Because uh, it lasted more than a thousand years. Okay. So it started in the 500s uh, when the Roman Empire collapsed. And it ended um, at the end of the 15th century when Christopher Columbus uh, discovered America. Yeah. This is what the historians uh, tend to say, what they agree to say. And here in Sala, we're going to focus on the second half of the Middle Ages, so from the 10th to the 15th century. Okay, so you mean that the city was built around the 10th century yeah. or something? Yeah, okay. so basically the city was built in the 9th century. Why? Because we know that in the 9th century, Vikings uh, spread all around Europe and attacked uh, France. And we know that the Vikings came here in Dordogne. Uh, they uh, went by the river with a boat and they attacked a monastery, which was uh, very close to the river. And basically the monks in the monastery decided to flee. So they fled from the river and they settled here in Sala. Why here? Because it's in the middle of different hills. So there is a sort of natural protection around the city. And there is also a little stream that we call the Cuse. And the Cuse, uh, basically where you have water, you have life. So this is why they decided to settle here. Okay, and, and the Cuse is, is, is um, because the Dordogne is also the name of the river, right? Yeah, so, so Dordogne is the biggest river. Mm -hmm. And Cuse is a small stream that goes into the Dordogne. Okay. So they basically fled from the Dordogne riverside to come here because they were more protected uh, from the Vikings. Like in Paris, like with the Seine River. Or exactly. Same, same idea. Okay. Exactly, the same idea. Okay. So uh, it's basically a religious city. First there was a monastery with monks and the city really started to spread around the 12th century because in the 12th century uh, we're gonna get close to the church where I'm gonna explain to you everything about it. But basically in the 12th century the, the monastery um, was very lucky to get uh, relics. Okay. So they got two different kinds of relics. They got a piece of the crown of thorns of Jesus. Oh, okay, so uh, holy, like very holy relic. Very holy thing. Okay. But this relic came from Jerusalem. 
So there wasn't so many legitimacy about this relic, and we needed something more local. So they decided to get a second type of relic. Mm -hmm. And this second type is the bones of a saint. Oh, wow. Okay. Okay? So this saint's name is Sacerdos. Mm -hmm. And Sacerdos is uh, a monk that was born around Sarla. And he basically got um, a very good career in, the, in church. And he became the bishop of Limoges. Limoges is a very big city in Sarla. Mm -hmm. And uh, this monk, Sacerdos, uh, had magical powers. Uh, he had the power, yeah. A monk with magical powers? Yeah. Okay. Interesting. <laughs> he, he basically could cure people from diseases. Oh, that's interesting. That's interesting right now with the virus. Yeah. Like, he could actually cure people. I wish we had Sacerdos right now. <laughs> <laughs> okay. uh, and so during his lifetime, he managed to cure people. So he became a holy person, a saint. And when he died, the monastery of Sala managed to get his bones back here. Okay. And they put them inside the church. Okay. Yeah, inside okay. this church right behind us. Okay. And with the bones, uh, pilgrims from all around France started to come to Sala because they wanted to be cured from the diseases. Of okay. yeah. And so this is how Sala grew mm -hmm. and spread because basically pilgrims uh, brought money, money. Uh, economy, and uh, tourism, with pilgrims, like, yeah, exactly, yeah, exactly. Tourism, <laughs> tourism, like, like us, yeah. Uh, and pilgrims, uh, with the pilgrims, we needed uh, craftsmen, Americans, different kinds of uh, jobs around the monastery mm -hmm. to make the city real. And this is how Sala uh, grew. Mm -hmm. And in the 12th century, we know that there were 4,000 inhabitants. Okay, in and now what do you think so, it is? For the Middle Ages, it's quite a big city already. Yeah. And to give you to put things into perspective, today in Sala we only have ten thousand inhabitants. Oh yeah, so that's not not. So really it's like twice okay. as much. Yeah. Basically. Yeah, but it's it doesn't seem like so dense. I mean, I don't know how how big is. Well, the, the thing city. is, as I told you, Sala is surrounded by hills. So ah it's yeah. Sort so of a natural spread, protection, really. and it cannot really spread. So okay. This is why today it's still quite a small city. Okay, but it looks it looks very cute. So yeah. And uh, we should Got come right closer here. to the church so yeah. I can explain to you okay, a little bit more. Okay, I'm following you. Let's go. Let's go to the church. So I want to show you this specific house. It's a typical house from the Renaissance period. It's a house from uh, the time of heyday of Sarla. So the heyday of Sarla was uh, right after the Hundred Years' War, mm -hmm. at the end of the Middle Ages, and at the beginning of the Renaissance. Okay. So it was basically between the end of the Hundred Years' War and the beginning of the Religious Wars, okay. at the end of the 16th. And this house is very famous nowadays because a very great thinker of the Renaissance was born there. Yeah, I see, I see his name, so it's La Boissy. Exactly, okay. La Boissy. Maybe you've heard of him? I mean, I know Montaigne, uh, yeah. the philosopher, used to be his friend, but I don't know much about La Boissy, so... Well, basically, they were best friends. Okay. <laughs> they okay. were best friends. And La Boissy uh, wrote one very specific uh, text mm -hmm. when he was only 19 years old. Okay. So it's quite something already. Yeah. Um, he wrote the discourse on voluntary servitude. So what is that? Voluntary servitude. Servitude uh, means uh, constraint, mm -hmm. limitation. Yeah. So we would tend to say and to think that servitude is not voluntary. That we are limited uh, by an authority that is above us. Yeah. And basically, La Boetie, what, what La Boetie is doing is an indictment against monarchy and absolutism. Okay, so it's not about okay. slavery or about, no. uh, I don't know, like it's about, religious... It's really just about, it's it's about, about the power. Freedom. Okay, so it's, it's about, about the king and the power. Exactly. And, what he's okay. saying is that people are uh, constrained mm -hmm. uh, by a power because they want it. Okay. So, you know what so I mean? yeah, yeah, I see what you mean. So, but do you think so? At the time, so the monarchy was much, much. I mean, it was more important than anything else. It was yeah. like the absolute power, and the king could do whatever he wanted. And and is 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 yeah. taxes against so that? Basically, okay? yeah. Or the fact that people are, are also thinking themselves as they have to follow a certain path and they exactly. have to. Exactly. Okay. Basically, what Laboisi is saying is that for an authority to be maintained, there needs to be. A compliance from the people. Okay. Oh, wow, that's very, okay. very interesting. Even though they okay. um, they maintain the power with um, force, force uh, yeah. or uh, 
but violence people, yeah, or anything. Yeah, they need to be like innings. For a power to be um, durable, yeah, there needs to be a, okay. a sort of so yeah, so it's, it's uh, pretty, compliance it's, from it's the people. It's very uh, like a free thinker or something. Yeah, like it's, it's really like a kind of a rebel. What almost, is amazing so, about yeah. him is that he wrote that 200 years before the Enlightenment and okay. the French Revolution. And before the French Revolution. So this yeah. text basically paved the way to Enlightenment. Wow. Okay. And people don't know about it because it's very famous here in Sala and in the south of, of France. Course, yeah. But basically, Montaigne became more famous mm -hmm. than him. Yeah, there is the Fontaine, the Fontaine, the statue of Montaigne that yeah. is just by La Sorbonne. So I know this one. In Paris, we but, have a statue uh, of Montaigne, but yeah. not of La Boétie. No, and, and there is no there is no sculpture of him right now. I mean, it's just, no. just a little bit. You know why? Because we have no portrait of him. Ah, we don't know. What is said about this guy is that he was very ugly. And this is why we don't, we don't have any portraits. Okay. And he died at 33 years old, and we don't 33? know. 33? Yeah, he was very young. Okay. And we don't know anything about his death. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> okay. <laughs> what is crazy is that we don't know anything about his death. Okay. And we can pretend that maybe his text uh, was one of the reasons why he was hated around here. Mm -hmm. And we don't know if he died of disease or murder or oh, anything, wow. and we don't have any Mystery. grave. We don't know anything about his death. Okay. So that makes him even more interesting. Okay, well, I like the house there. It's very unusual. We don't have that in yeah, Paris. And basically, his father different. was American, so this was uh, a shock. And we can see it because uh, we on the ground way? floor, yeah, we can okay. get closer. So this was a shop. We know that thanks to those stones, because those stones were used to uh, here? put yeah to put all the goods and the products. Okay, so this was a stall. Here. Okay. And so we know that he was born there, but his family was rich enough not to live here. Mm -hmm. How do we know that? Because they decided to build this house right in front of the church mm -hmm. and not in front of the fountain. Because in the Middle Ages, we need to have our house close to the fountain because we need water to yes. survive. Mm -hmm. And those people were rich enough not to live close to the fountain okay. because they had another house outside the city, near the countryside. So this was just used as a shop. Okay, thank okay. you. Yeah. But it's so beautiful. It's, it is really. Yeah, all the decoration. And now we're going to enter the tiny streets oh, yeah. of Sarla. It looks like getting into a maze or... It, it, it really is. It's not, it's not scary, it's just, it's just beautiful and charming. But it still has a mysterious yes. uh, atmosphere like thanks to the light. Yeah, but more like a movie, more, more like a theater or movie. Well, you know that actually Walt Disney uh, uh, movie teams came here okay. uh, to take drawings for movies, that, for all the movies that happened in the Middle Ages. So okay. basically for the Beauty and the Beast, mm -hmm. they came here to take drawings oh. and to recreate oh. the town of uh, Beauty. Oh, to say bonjour, bonjour. <laughs> exactly. Okay. And so there's still, there still is this uh, mysterious atmosphere, I was telling you, thanks to the light, because it, this is not electricity, this is natural gas. And gas brings this sort of yellow atmosphere mm -hmm. that, um, that allows the stones to be alive yeah. and the shadow and the, sh the shadow zones to be more mysterious. But, but right? also the, the stone is yellow, which is very different from Paris, where it's all beige, yeah, kind of creamy. Yeah, all the stones here like are yellow because here it's, uh, it's warmer. I like yeah, it's it. It's kind of chalky. Yeah. Yeah. yeah I like it. And also everything is cobblestone. So. Yeah. And it, and you have no cars around, so is it you can just go by seats? There is no. Yeah, there are no cars around here. Okay. And so this is thanks to a very famous uh, French writer and Ministry of Culture. His ah, name is André Malraux. Okay. It's written just there. Yes, I can see it. Maybe you've heard of him. He yeah, wrote because him. he made some work in the Marais district in Paris. Yeah. So basically, André Malraux. André Malraux was a great French writer. He was uh, enrolled in the resistance during World War II. And in the 1960s, he became the French Minister of Culture. And what he did in the 60s is that he passed a law to, for national heritage, for the preservation of national heritage. Mm -hmm. And Sarla was the town used to start the whole project. The whole project. Right. Okay. So basically, Sarla was still a medieval town in quite a good shape in the 1960s, but there was still a lot of work to do. And the whole point of the law was to recreate the medieval atmosphere, mm -hmm. but 
with keeping um, the modern comforts. Yeah, like so electricity this one, the and exactly. water and yeah. Because okay. in the 1960s we, st we had those beautiful houses, but no electricity, no current water. Yeah, okay. It was very difficult, especially with the floors. There were different uh, pieces of, of uh, ground. Mm -hmm. Um, so we had bits of cement, bits of cobblestone, it was all mixed up yeah. and we needed to recreate um, um, yeah, some, 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 some kind of harmony maybe? Exactly, some harmony one. between the grounds yeah. and the walls. But you can, you can tell, that, that's why probably it, it looks like a, a movie scene because everything looks so perfect but at the same time those little details like look old but you can tell yeah some, some work was made but also respecting completely the, uh, it was quite the well atmosphere. Made, actually. Yeah, no, it's, it's really well made. <laughs> no, it's, it's true, it's just it's beautiful but at the same time you have all those little details that tell you it's not perfect. <laughs> it's, not, it's not Disneyland, you know, it's, it's actually the true old city and I like it it's uh, yeah and, and uh, you're right the, the light being the yellow um, yeah the late yellow atmosphere it's very different from Paris where everything is it's gray it's very and, bright yeah, yeah. It's, it's great. Okay. So, oh wow! And so great. here we have a thing for food, <laughs> as everywhere else in France. And so here in Salah you have more than 150 different restaurants. What? Yeah. Okay. So for, for 10,000 inhabitants, 150 restaurants. Okay, like this town. <laughs> I love this city already. Okay. So this is why we're going to see uh, restaurants to, uh, to race everywhere. I see that, and and I see also some night like Le Chevalier de la Tour. So so you had um, like. A castle and, and, and royalty maybe yeah, here? Yeah, we have so many castles around here. Yeah? We have more than a thousand and two hundred castles just in Perigo. Just in Perigo. Yeah. More Why? than thousand castles. Yeah. But with how many kings living actually here? Like no kings at all. Okay. I'm so gonna tell you everything okay. about that. Yeah. So basically, Perigord in the Middle Ages mm -hmm. was part of the Duke of Aquitaine. Okay. And so the Duke of Aquitaine. Um, basically, during the second half of the Middle Ages, it belonged to the English crown. Thanks to the marriage between Eleanor of Aquitaine and Henry II of Montagenet, okay. all the Aquitaine became English. Okay, so you mean the, the region, so Aquitaine is, like, is what, Bordeaux? Aquitaine and, is Bordeaux, and, and Biarritz, right? okay. uh, all the southwestern part of France. Okay, basically. so that was English? That, became, How British yeah, that belongs English. to the English. Okay. And in Périgord, we are in the northern border of this duty. Mm -hmm. And so it was a zone of constant fights between uh, France and England. Okay. And so this is why we needed to build a lot of different castles to protect our land. Uh, so it's more like fortresses. It's, it's, it's not, strongholds. It's not, yeah, it's not really to leave and to... It's not like, castles it's not like Versailles, ah, Versailles or It's not to actually make the war against the It's English just military places. strongholds. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay. So this sense. is why, uh, yeah. Maybe we're gonna do a tour in one of those castles. Yeah, let's these do that. days. Of course. Uh, but yeah, it's more medieval strongholds and real castles. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's not like the Louvre with all the beautiful painting no. and ceiling. Okay. Not at all. Not goldy. It has only military purpose. Okay. And, uh, yeah. Okay, so. You're gonna go through this passage? Well, <laughs> just love that. I can tell the. Uh, this is probably about like 15th century. Uh, yeah, this is no. 15th century. No. Oh wow, there's another night here. <laughs> so, this is totally something we could uh, put on Instagram. Or <laughs> Sorry, but I mean, it's just so magnificent. I love it. What I really like to tell about what I really like to tell about this city is that basically, as I was telling you, it was not only surrounded by hills but also by surrounding walls to protect uh, people inside from uh, the invaders. Mm -hmm. And so there was a problem of space; we were lacking of room. So basically, different people living in houses uh, needed to use strategies to make their houses bigger without, ah. you know. Without the using, uh, the, the, okay, I see. So that's why they were bigger, but on the side. Exactly. Like, okay. So this is what we call a corbel. Right in front of us, uh, the wooden part. So this this was used to make our house bigger, right there. And this is another strategy right here. This is a sort of bridge that links those two houses. So they're not using the space on the ground but I still can connect the two houses, right? Yeah. It's not very 
Very and, vegan. And you can also see through the streets that the walls are not. Um, yeah. Linear, yeah, they're not. They're not yeah, they're not exactly straight. And and at the end of it, you can see truffle, and I love it. <laughs> <laughs> so that's that's my kind of stuff. Actually, gonna go this way. Well, so really? Okay, let's go. Of course. If there is truffle, let's go. <laughs> Oh wow! Yeah, you can feel that the walls are kind of going one to another. It's yeah, it's very it's, it's, it's very narrow. You can tell it's very narrow. The doors are Yeah. That we are in the Périgord Noir, so this is this is black truffle. Yeah, this is black truffle. Okay. So um, you can find that here. Okay, but we in the have soil. wow, that's very expensive. And you can find that thanks to your dog, thanks to a fly. When you go in the fields, you have a specific tree, mm -hmm. and if you see a fly moving around um, the the roots, the, the roots yeah, of the tree, yeah. maybe there's a truffle. Ah, there. okay. So so you have to look for black flies. Fly. Well, flies, uh, okay, and, and, you can and, also, and dog, of and, course. And your, your dog can also help you find truffles. Yes, and, and I heard about pigs also. Pigs yeah, can also find that. Yeah, that is more rare. Really? It's more useful yeah. than dogs. Okay. I was, I was thinking about <laughs> myself with a pig on leash. Okay, <laughs> not for this time. Um, okay, what other products do we have? So, here? everything related to dog. Okay. Basically. Mm -hmm. um, so, pâtés, foie gras, of course. Yeah. Um, so the duck, the duck is the main. Is the duck and geese. Duck and geese. Okay. And so I see some cassoulet. No, that's not really from here, is it? Ah, this is more from Toulouse. It's more from Toulouse, but right? But the confit, the confit d'oie. That's that the the, the, <laughs> yeah. the goose confit. That's. Uh, this is the that, leg of the duck. Okay, so this is uh, typical typical from here. And confit de cana. So it's it's um, some kind of meat that is uh, um, how do you say like it's uh, it's just uh, conserved for a long time in salt yeah. and the salt sauce and oil. And then after that, you just have to heat it, and that's it, right? Those yeah. are made of can. Okay. Yeah, but you eat it with truffle. Oh, Always. Okay. <laughs> so you said also you had wine from Bordeaux, I assume, or from this kind of. We got some wine around yeah, here, but to be honest, wine from Bordeaux is the best. Is the best. Okay. Okay. <laughs> so we're gonna focus on the truffle. I'm good with that. And also you talk about sep. So the mushroom. I don't know if, yeah. any, if everyone knows about the sep. Those are the yeah, best mushrooms. Sep are my favorite mushrooms. Yeah. Okay. Yes. Yeah. We have the this same, is actually the, the moment of the year to find seps in the woods, mm. uh, but there needs to be a lot of water, uh, a lot of rain, and around August the 15th, usually every year we get storms, Okay. and sometimes storms are big enough to have enough water in the soil, to have seps. so we can have seps. Okay, but I this see something year, else here. Okay, those are, yeah, the, those are the fake seps. But I, I see something else you didn't talk to me about, the, the noir, the noir nuts. Yes, those are nuts. And uh, the region is... Uh, uh, it's also known for that? Yeah. Okay. It's the most famous supplier uh, of France for okay. nuts. Really? Okay. Yeah. So you see that Nuts of Perigord is uh, AOP. Mm -hmm. I said that in English. Um, like there's a label to protect the RS. Yeah. So it's, it's, uh, it's the same, I think. I mean, we, we say the appellation, like protected appellation. So it's uh, yeah. the same thing. Yeah. So Noix du Perigord are allegedly the best nuts. Oh, okay, so we need to try that. So we need, so we need to, to try, try truffle, nut cake, and truffle. And, well, okay, I'm gonna stay <laughs> so here for a things. month. <laughs> This part of the city. Sure. But, um, and just talking about food, I heard there is also a market here, like a food yeah. market. But maybe it's not now. This is the marketplace. This is the marketplace. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. This is the biggest place of Sarlau. Mm -hmm. So now we are uh, in the evening, so we don't have market anymore. But in the morning, this is the most famous market in the whole region. Uh, it's very big. We have more than 500 different stands, uh, wow. different uh, suppliers. And uh, um, that's pretty much it. We're gonna come back there okay, uh, a sure. few minutes later. Okay. I wanna show you something around here. Okay, so during the day, great market to go. Great market, Having... especially in the morning. Okay, so it's local products like little artisanal yeah. kind of things. And okay, we have like so many laugh. different local products. Yeah. Uh, but we very much related it. to ducks, but also yeah. different sort of fruits, vegetables, a lot of strawberries, asparagus. Ah. Uh, mushrooms. Yeah, there are many, many things around here. We know here. how to eat here. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> like that. Oh wow, it's and getting one, dark one, here. One thing I want to show you is this place right in front of us. This is a hotel particulier. 
So basically, this is uh, to talk about this place, we need to talk about uh, a little boy. This is the story of a little boy who was just a staple boy. So he was uh, basically taking care of the horses of uh, important people here in Sala. Mm -hmm. And this little guy managed, um, through his education and his encounters, to become the great secretary of King Henry IV. Okay, Henry IV, I know him. <laughs> Everyone knows Henry IV. So this guy's name is Jean de Vienne. Okay. And he was born in Sala. He managed to get out of here and move to Paris. And within his encounters and everything, he became the first yeah, secretary of Henry IV. He became very powerful, very wealthy. Mm -hmm. And uh, what he wanted to do to prove the people of Sala that he succeeded in life, he basically bought three different houses okay. that is stuck together uh, to create this big palace okay. just for himself. Wow. Yeah, just to just to prove that he was now. And the craziest thing is that he never came back to Sala. Never lived in this place, but he just wanted to brag. I just wanted see. to show off. Oh, yeah, why not? Why not? <laughs> I and mean, if you can, why not showing off? I like it. So, it's, this is the. And there's the, the M, like Marie. Yeah, that's funny. Exactly. That's the M for Melville. So ah, this was Melville. <laughs> could be mine. I'm sorry. I mean, he's not living there. He never lived here, so I can be there. That could be mine. Okay. This is the name of. This is his family name, mm -hmm. Melville. Yeah. And on the left, we can see the portrait of King Henry IV. Ah. You can recognize him easily with uh, his big uh, chin, chin big, and big nose. nose. Yeah. Okay. And on the right side, this is supposed to be the portrait of a woman, but we don't know who exactly. Yeah, so we suppose this is the portrait of Gabrielle Destre, ah, which was the favorite, the lover, of lover and favorite of Henry IV. Uh -huh. And maybe you know her because there is a very famous painting um, where she's represented taking a bath with one of her. Um, one of her. Oh, friends. Yeah, yeah, yeah I see the one where it's, well, it's kind of like, you know. So they, <laughs> let me tell. No kids here. Okay, so yeah, the, the posing like she's touching the breast, breast. of Gabrielle Dessay, but it's, it's apparently a sign to say that she was pregnant oh, yeah? or something. I think, I think, I'm not sure about that, about that, but I think that was saying that yeah, she was, or something okay. like that. Maybe I'm wrong. I don't know where this painting is. I think it's in the Louvre, isn't it? Yeah, it's in the Louvre, but okay. yeah. I'm so this is supposedly yeah. Gabrielle Dessay. Okay. Great. Should we carry on? Of course. Yeah, it looks amazing. Let's go there. So we're gonna take this narrow path. Okay, so we have to imagine ourselves in the carriage. Yeah, that's the that's the sound of a carriage. Yeah. Of course it. <laughs> we have to imagine that here in the Middle Ages it was super super loud, super uh, loud. There were people shouting everywhere. Okay. There were uh, different sorts of animals. Mm -hmm. So we have to imagine that there were four thousand inhabitants. Maybe the same amount of um, pigs mm -hmm. and chickens. Yes. A lot of horses as well with the different knights. So it was basically very, very loud. Mm -hmm. And this is why rich people wanted to flee from the sea. Yeah. Because it was of very course. difficult to live here. Mm -hmm. and it was way better to live in the countryside. Of course, yeah. And when it's very narrow and you have some money, it's people know that they go yeah. away. Like it's in Paris, it's the same. They just want to go away, but they still want to know the news and mm -hmm. uh, keep in touch and be sociable. So this is why, for instance, with the Laboisi house, they kept this shop right in the center of Sarla so they could come back mm -hmm. and hear about the stories and the news and everything. Yeah. So but still, uh, enjoy the countryside. I see. Okay. So the, the other building I want to show you is this one. Okay. This is the Hotel Dieu, mm -hmm. like in Paris. Yeah, the so Hotel, Hotel Dieu, so the, the, it's the building that is just by Notre Dame for the people. Yeah. So it's an hospital now. Exactly, and it's the same it's here. It's the same, same yeah. idea. Okay. It so was Hotel the, Dieu, the house of God, right? Exactly, okay. the house of God. It was the hospital here in Sarla during the Middle Ages. So all this building, the, that's this the hospital. Whole building. Okay. And there is a room that I want to show you from the outside. The one with the fan? <laughs> right there because it's ah, gorgeous. It, so the restaurants... Um, this is a restaurant nowadays, but this was this used to be the kitchen of the hospital. Okay. Okay. And so um, I want to tell, talk to you about this because here in the Middle Ages, um, especially in Sala, there were a lot of dead people because of an epidemic. Uh -huh. Have you heard of it? Black the, Death? Of course, yeah, I mean, uh, yeah, the, pla the plague. The I mean, plague? Everybody, everybody yeah. Is, yeah. 
So basically, during the plague, uh, two thirds of the French population died, mm -hmm. and uh, it is known that the plague uh, was at the speed of 75 kilometers per day. What do you mean? So basically, each day, yeah. the plague was reaching 75 more kilometers. Ah. So it started in Italy. <laughs> I was like, how the plague is running? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> because okay, people, because people, people are yeah, fleeing. Yeah, no, but you're right, you're right, of course. They're trying to flee, I, was, so I they, never they thought about the plague disease. being like quick, you know, as a kilometer or miles. Yeah, you know, basically so. it started okay. in, in the south of Italy yeah. and it spread yeah. all around Europe yeah. in about six months. And uh, so there were two different sorts of plague in the Middle Ages, the bubonic one. So this is the... Yeah, with the, uh, the bubble kind of thing, like the... Bubbles. The, the, the bubbles. Yeah. Gross. And there was the <laughs> pneumonic plague, yeah, uh, which was yeah. Ebola. Mm -hmm. And uh, here, in the hospital, we were trying to uh, cure people from the plague. Yes. And at that time, uh, it was very difficult because we didn't know how to do it. Yeah. Basically, we had no solutions. So we tried different things. The first one was to do bleedings. Do you know what bleedings are? Yeah, of course. Yeah, just get open the arm and you just let yeah. like one liter, two liters of blood just getting on and the... And this was yeah. thought to be a sort of an option. <laughs> that's, that's a great option. Yeah, that, of no course face. it wasn't. <laughs> and uh, at, at best, it didn't do anything, but at worst, it killed people. Yeah. <laughs> so well, maybe quicker than the plague, but anyway. We didn't have any solutions. Okay, so and basically, people were getting crazy about this plague. And uh, they didn't know what to do, so uh, they were just completely desperate. Yeah, but it's the and same in Paris. They were using some plants, trying with sulfur, whatever they had in mind. Yeah, and the yeah. thing is that as they had no options, and as they understood that uh, the disease uh, spread more easily in the cities, mm -hmm. they were fleeing from the city and they were going to the countryside, and it was even worse because they contaminated the uh, countryside. Yeah. And so people were completely desperate and um, I heard something uh, a few weeks ago about this crisis in the Middle Ages is that people were so desperate that they were trying to find um, uh, a solution thanks to God and there were some uh, fanatics basically yeah. that were just going on the roads and were flagellating them themselves while okay. singing cantics. Okay, so they were like, like I think just this whipping, is whipping, whipping, whipping their, their backs like that, just like, like this is a solution. Okay, why not? And I found, I thought this was very interesting. So it's in the all way... reading or whipping yourself to <laughs> escape from the Exactly. Nice. And what I thought was interesting is the way the different centuries um, illustrate how we react as humans mm -hmm. to epidemics, you know? Yeah. Yeah, so I mean, right now we have all They had solutions uh, back in history, and now we have different ones, but I think this is still very interesting, um, the way people react, and, and yeah, that's pretty much it. Yeah, but okay, but now we, we're actually trying to, uh, to make our path not very close to the people, so we don't infect anyone, but yeah, yeah we, we have our mask, and uh, we, yeah, we're This is why we're good. focusing on tiny streets, where they're all... Yeah, exactly, where it's we don't want crowded. to be in the crowd to, no, right now, so wow, okay, so is it the same church we, we saw no, before? No, it's the second one. Okay. So, you would think, why are there two different churches at mm -hmm. 100 meters of distance? Yeah. So basically, the first one that we saw was uh, reserved for monks. Okay. It was not open to the public. The only people allowed to enter were the pilgrims. So basically, all the people around the monastery couldn't enter. Okay, so it was really but just there... the VIP church over there. Exactly. Okay. And the thing is that all 99% of the population, the other 99% that wasn't allowed to enter, was still very faithful. Of course. And they wanted the place to pray. So they just decided to build a second church ah. right behind us. This is Saint Marie of the Market. Oh, that's for me. That's so you. Of, the, of the market. Of the market. I love that's it. Even more you. Okay. <laughs> okay. Please. Why of the market? Because we're gonna go to the marketplace, um, the actual marketplace of the Middle Ages. Ah. We saw the one today okay. that is bigger, but we're gonna get closer to the one of the Middle Ages. Okay. So you already had and a market. And so what's really interesting about this church is that it was desacralized during the French Revolution. Oh. So basically that means that during the French Revolution, they just decided not to use it anymore. Mm -hmm. And they destroyed a whole part of the church. Oh, okay. And so nowadays it is used as a covered market. Ah. And it's really great so because the they managed to mix uh, history yeah. with this uh, medieval church with modernism. There are the, those steel glasses. There is a yeah, big uh, glass as well. 
So okay, so it's uh, from the outside it really looked like a church, but, but you say that in, inside there is nothing. I mean, there is no masses. There is nothing okay, religious. So ne nothing holy anymore. Nothing. No. Nothing religious. Okay. Nothing. But food. And there is even an elevator <laughs> in the tower bell. Oh, there is an elevator. There's an elevator, a panoramic one, where you can see um, where you have a panoramic view of the roofs of Sala. I see. And it's really great. Uh huh. Really the best view in town. Okay. Quite much better than the stairs of uh, Arc de Triomphe. <laughs> <laughs> we were talking about that earlier. Okay, so now we. And so now we're reaching the geese market. Ah. Because, as I was telling you, ducks and geese are the local product, the main local product. And this is what really strikes me is this place is so tiny. And you have to imagine that there were 4,000 people every day coming here to buy products just here just here just in this little place yeah. okay i don't know if you can see well because it's kind of dark here but it's 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 yeah it looks very small for four thousand yeah. people doing their marketing. and what really strikes me as well is the um, the size of the streets they're just so tiny because yeah. i was as i was telling you we were lacking of room mm -hmm. here yeah and so all the space is used uh, very cleverly Okay. Um, I think we can go this way sure. so I can show you the fountain. Yeah, because yeah, it's very dark, so I don't know if you the can see fountain. anything, guys, but it's really beautiful. So come here <laughs> whenever you can <laughs> to see it in real, real life. It's really beautiful. And we are actually reading Le Mirandol, which is one of the best restaurants in Sarla. How is it? Where only locals eat. <laughs> oh. And this is what I want to show you. Yeah. This is once again Saint Mary Fountain. So this is you. Yes. Well, I have a name that is everywhere. Yeah. So pretty easy. And at the beginning of the tour, I was telling you about the La Cuse, mm -hmm. which is the stream that goes uh, below the ground, yeah. the ground level. And this is a uh, resurgence. This is a fountain from the Cuse. So this is the actual water ah. of the stream. Okay, so and is it um, water that we're using to drink? I mean, I, I'm I'm supposing that it's not drinkable yep. water now. That's the only fountain that we have in this town. So the 4,000 inhabitants of Sala used to come here every day with their jars ah. to get some water. So and beautiful. nowadays, uh, if you throw a coin in this water, that is allegedly bringing you luck. Okay, do you have a coin? Yeah, I do. A, a tiny one. I don't want to take all your money for doing that. <laughs> Okay, so that's, is that's it? No, that's too much. No, it's okay. Don't worry. Okay. Every bring me a lot of luck. A lot of luck. Okay, this is one euro, guys. Okay, so a lot of luck. With the um, right hand. Right hand. Okay. This way. So it's exactly like in Italy. I love yeah, it. Yeah, with the trading counter. Okay, let's do it. Are you ready? Okay, I'm ready. One, two, three. Et voilà. Okay, <laughs> getting a lot of luck. So this is done. Okay, I love it. And this is a little Saint Mary, so that's that must, must work, you know. <laughs> okay. Um, so this was for everyone to drink from. Uh, now I suppose there's other not fountain. only the humans, but other, also the yeah. cattle and um, all the animals. So. Okay. And you have to imagine that Sarla, in the medieval times, was also very, very dirty mm. because. Um, basically, only rich people could have toilets in their apartments. Uh -huh. So you have to imagine <laughs> I'm, I'm that the I'm rest of the population yeah. was just throwing everything mm. by the window. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> so this is why it was very important to have a fountain that you can keep clean. Sure. Sure. Makes sense. And also a story that I love is that um, in the Middle Ages, uh, when very important people came to Sarla, yeah. They were entering the city from the north side, so upstream, because downstream, at the, at the end of the town, there were all the tanners, ah. and other people yeah, uh, the leather making and leather the, and everything, yeah. and this is very, very steep. Yeah, it's gross, yeah. And yeah. they need a lot of water to do the leather, yeah. and they were just throwing everything in the river. I so see. this is why when we have VIP coming in town, yeah, we, we want, want them, them to coming come from Yeah, the of course, north. makes sense. <laughs> the clean part of the stream, not, not the and other And to show one. you once again how tiny the streets are, yeah. I need to show you this. So basically, you have to imagine that people were moving around with uh, carriages mm -hmm. and the, the streets were so tiny that we needed to dig within the walls so two carriages could cross the streets. Okay. okay. So, so, you're, so, so you're, you're coming from there. Okay, I'm coming from here. Okay. <laughs> I'm coming the other way. So I need to park here. I need to park so I can pass. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> 
You're gonna go back this way? Yeah. yeah. So you have to imagine a very stinky and very noisy city. Uh, but also beautiful as we can still see nowadays. <laughs> yeah, it's really beautiful. It's, uh, it's, it's also, it's at the same time animated, but also quiet. You can have exactly the atmosphere you like. Like if you are on holiday to have fun and to eat, you can tell that it's very, yeah, it's, it's cool. You have a lot of restaurants, yeah. and bars, but at the same time, you just go in a little street and suddenly no, no noise. You can tell it's so quiet here. I love it. Okay, so... How do you say? Do you say you're Dordogneer or Périgourdin or something? Um, you would say Périgourdin. I am Périgourdin. Okay, so you're very the only... are you very proud of being Périgourdin, Alexandre? Of course Alexandre? I am. <laughs> <laughs> so, why I'm that? Why, 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 why are you so proud? I mean, what is so I'm, great I'm about this place? I'm prouder to be Périgourdin than Dordogneau mm -hmm. because basically Périgord carries the historic values of the area. Mm. Périgord is the historic name since the Roman times while Dordogne is only the administrative name of the region that Napoleon created. Okay. So this is more recent and basically the name Périgord carries a lot of values, you know, gastronomy, yeah. castles, culture, okay. all those things that I love. Okay. And so this is why I'm more Périgourdin than Dordogne. Okay. And, Does that make sense to you? Yes, of course. And okay. is there a little accent? Can you can you do the, the, the French uh, Périgourdin accent? Because I know oh, it's on. pretty strong. <laughs> Say, say something like uh, Bonjour Marie, je suis Alexandre, or something like that, but so, with the accent. With the, with the Parisian accent, how would you say it? Bah, I would say Bonjour Marie, je uh, Bonjour Alexandre, <laughs> je m'appelle Marie. <laughs> so with, my the, with the Perigordian accent, I would say Bonjour Marie, je m'appelle Alexandre. Ah, uh, I you love like it. it. <laughs> yeah, very singing. So we're going to climb those stairs yeah, okay. because I want to show you the panoramic view on the current marketplace okay. where we can see uh, the church, ah. the two churches actually. Oh, there's someone here. <laughs> that, yeah. That, that, I, I actually, yeah, okay. I, I was thinking that. That's my best friend. <laughs> because. What's uh, going on here? This is a poet. Can I touch this it? Is a, yeah, you can touch it. <laughs> this is a poet from the Middle Ages. Okay. He's supposed to be representing someone like uh, the Ronsard or François Villon, which are famous uh, poets from the Renaissance, Middle Ages, Renaissance time. Okay. And uh, he's trying to take inspiration from the marketplace. As you can see. Yeah, you can tell. It's, it's pretty chill. It's not really working. <laughs> just observing things. But it yes. has a pretty good view. I so love this the view this is what I want to show you. So that's the church. That's the, the, the Saint Marie. The one I want to show you this. Okay. And right in front of us, this is Saint Marie mm -hmm. that we were just uh, crossing a few minutes ago. Yeah. And in the back, you can see Saint Sacerdos, the okay, church that churches. we saw at the beginning of the tour. Mm -hmm. Okay. In the marketplace for all the yeah, people that's really enjoying so, the nights. But what is going on here? Because so you told me that there is a market here, but yeah. now I can see um, some doors that are look yeah. very modern. So if you remember well, I told you that during the French Revolution, um, the church was desacralized. Yes. And what they did as well is that they just destroyed the whole part of the church to allow. Um, people to move around okay. more easily because as I told you the streets were so tiny that we needed space, we needed room mm -hmm. so we just crushed the whole side of the oh, church okay. so this was and you can side. still see it. this is the nail of the church actually ah, so this will so this be like in the middle? Something? yeah, okay. right now we are sitting in the middle of the church in the former church mm -hmm. and uh, there is a very famous architect in France mm -hmm. uh, this guy uh, made the Philharmonie in Paris yes. the Quai Branly Museum mm -hmm. uh, he also made the new Louvre in Abu Dhabi yeah. this guy's name is Jean Nouvel maybe okay. you've heard of him yeah, of course. and actually Jean Nouvel was born here in Salah Ah, he grew Jean up Nouvel there. Because yeah. I was always thinking he was a Parisian guy. Okay, no, so at all. He's, okay, he's from here. <laughs> he's like <Okay>. me. He's <laughs> from there and he's very proud of being from here. Mm -hmm. And he was basically asked to build something here in this church. Uh, to renew it, to make something out of this church. Mm -hmm. And this is why the project of a, a covered market was selected. Uh, and he decided to mix uh, modernism with um, the old 
old stones, and this is why we have big steel door. Right yeah, in front of us. I don't. I don't know if you can and really see that on the camera, but it's they, it, they're massive. I never saw steel doors it's so that big. big. It's uh, it's twenty three meters high. Twenty three meter. Okay. Wow, that's a lot. <laughs> twenty three meters <laughs> and high. When this wow. was built, uh, that created a lot of jam, a lot of a big scandal because. Basically, half of the population in Salah hated it, mm. and the other half loved it. Same thing with this the Eiffel Tower. This is the whole scandal with the Eiffel Tower, Same with thing. the Centre Pompidou as well. Always. Tout Montparnasse. So, everywhere. in my opinion, I really like the mix of modernism and old stones. It's nice. But yeah. I, I, I understand people yeah, like it. Yeah, I mean, it, it, it does look like it's... You know, it's kind of sober. It's not. It's not completely shiny, or it's not like Pompidou with all the colors, like like red and, and green and yellow. This is this is kind of going with the in the atmosphere. So I like it. I really like it. Okay, so we're gonna move, and this is the city hall of Sala okay. with the balcony. I like, like the atmosphere here with all the terraces. Yeah. You can hear the music. And it's so, I mean, is it is the weather always like that in this region? Because I want no, to live here now. <laughs> I have to admit, this is because this is wet, this is summer. <laughs> okay, because it's evening time, people are in t-shirts, in skirts. I just have this little light jacket, but in reality I could just be, you know. No. Um, Very cool to live around here from April to October. Yes. But I have to admit that during winter, it's... Because, so you, it's very calm. <laughs> so you live, you live there. So what are the summer activities? Because I heard like there's on the river you must That's do. That's the whole thing. Like, That's why canoe. I'm coming back every summer because there are just so many things to do. Okay, so. So, so first of all, you have 1,200 castles to visit. Okay, that's a lot. <laughs> that's going to take you some What days. is great is that if you like history, you not only have medieval castles, but you have also prehistoric caves. Uh -huh. You have the cave of Lascaux, which is very of close course. to it. Of course, yeah, it's known. Yeah, very known. Uh, so Lascaux is, is one of the biggest, most beautiful? Yeah, because it's one of the eldest ever discovered. Okay. So oh, we're going to go there. Yeah. So, so this is for history buffs. But if you're more into if you're more into sports yes. and uh, TV, uh, on the river you can do canoe. Yes. Do, do you like canoe? Of course. Have you ever done canoe on the river? Um, none that I remember. Oh, so. uh, yeah. Yeah. It's very cool here and it's very chill here in the Dordogne because okay. the river is very quiet and calm and there are no waterfalls or rapids. So it's okay. just it's very quiet. chill, sunbathing. So very family. Super cool. Kind of That's activity. a family thing, like, okay. typically. Mm -hmm. As you have a lot of forest as well, you can climb in the trees. Okay, so forest, climb in the trees, um, canoe, and um, I don't know, can we uh, can we do some horse riding, horse riding and, and bikes horse, also? Bike, you have a lot of uh, bike rentals in every town. Okay. There are just so many things to do, yeah. And um, with all this kind of middle ages atmosphere, when you grew up, like, you wanted to be a knight or something? Like you wanted to have a sword? <laughs> yeah. Is that the kind of city where you and grew I up? And I actually you... became a knight. You... What? <laughs> I became a knight. What do you mean? Because when I was a student, uh, I, I used to come back in the region every summer. Mm -hmm. And I used to work in a castle, a yes. medieval castle, that uh, his name was Castelnau. Mm -hmm. And uh, I was doing tours around the castle, yeah. dressed as a knight. <gasps> so, so I was the fantasy of every little boy. Oh, I love it. Sometimes the girls as well. Okay, <laughs> but I love that. Yeah, I, 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 I used to be a knight. Wow. Tough time, but I loved it. Okay, so maybe next video is gonna dress like a knight. <laughs> and me as a princess, of course. Okay, so you did that, and um, yeah, so and, and everyone here, they are very attached to that region. Like they, they really love the yeah. Rigor and they're defending the values <laughs> and the food and all of that, right? Like in Paris, yeah. I'm sure. And actually, I was lying to you when I was saying that it's very calm in winter because here in Sala we have um, a big cinema, actually quite big for the side of the city. Okay. And uh, every year in November we have a film festival, a film festival. where we have great um, French movie stars coming. Oh. And it's like a big um, peak of activity mm -hmm. because it's in November. Okay. And uh, also in the month of January we have, you're gonna love that, we have a tropical fair. 
What? Yeah, we have a truffle here fair. in Sanaa. Yeah, in Sanaa. Ah. And what you can do. So, is what is a truffle fair exactly? What are so we talking about? So you're morning, tasting all the truffle one exactly. by one. <gasps> you have okay. so many local <laughs> producers coming here in the marketplace. Yeah. And you, should be, you basically just buy some foods, uh -huh. uh, sort of tapas, okay. everything related to truffle. Oh, wow. So you come here in the morning, mm -hmm. and then you go to the concert place, sort of theater room mm -hmm. in Sarla. And in the afternoon, you have. Um, Chef étoilé. Yeah. How do you say that in English? Yeah, I mean like a chef, like a star chef, chef, a Michelin star chef. Exactly. <laughs> All the great chefs from Paris who love truffle, mm -hmm. they come here yeah. and they do shows. Basically, yeah. they're just cooking and uh, there is a game and if you're lucky enough you get to try the food cooked by the chef. Oh, love it! It's like, it's like the top chef thing. <laughs> exactly. Um, okay, so that's in January. So I will, we, will that's come in back January, in yeah. we will come back in January. <laughs> you okay. can come back before it. I, I like this idea. <laughs> um, okay, so uh, we're talking about the food and the, and the history. I also heard about um, a chateau with this American um, singer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We need to talk about that because she was so important to the For economic the region, development right? of yeah. the region. Yeah, uh, We have around here what, what is called the Chateau des Milandes. Mm -hmm. And this is the place where American uh, singer and dancer Josephine Baker came uh, and she bought the castle. So basically Josephine Baker, she was born in Missouri. She moved to New York when she was just 15 years old to become a dancer. And very quickly, because she was black and there was the whole segregation thing in the US, she decided to move to France. Okay. And almost overnight... So a, black, a black woman coming yeah. from the United States black and, woman coming and from succeeding Missouri, in France. Moving to Paris and almost overnight she became a huge, huge star in yeah. France. Okay. Maybe you've heard of her? Yeah, yeah, of course, yeah, she, I heard of her. She was very I, famous I, I, because I, she was dancing with the banana belt. Mm -hmm. So this is, uh, today we would tend to say that this is very racist, but at the time it worked. Yeah, so in the 20s, right? In the 20s? In the 1920s, yeah, exactly. Yeah, okay, so. Mm. And so she became very famous, she was in Paris, and uh, at some point she decided to move to the south of France because it was a much better way of life. Yes. And she bought a castle. Uh, we're gonna go this way later. Okay. Um, she bought a castle, Luminant. Okay. And so she's um, not only known for being an American singer and dancer, mm -hmm. but also for getting enrolled in the resistance during the Second oh, World War. Okay. And people usually don't know that, but she was a very close friend of General de Gaulle. Ah. And during the Second World War, um, she became a spy. Okay, I, I didn't knew that. First yeah. of all, she enrolled Jewish uh, music players in a band. Mm -hmm. And as she was doing concerts all around Europe, and that people all around Europe knew her, nobody would have said that she was, she was a spy. potentially a spy. I see. Hmm. And this is why a big um, cover for her. Okay. And uh, she also managed to, um, to carry uh, encrypted, coded messages in her music scores. Okay. Uh, for the General de Gaulle. Wow, okay. So, so we have this a, was a very courageous a, lady. A, a US lady. hero. Yeah. Uh, here, in not in Sala, but yeah. just at the side of Sala. And she was, uh, she was just so generous. Uh, she couldn't have children due to um, uh, disease. Mm -hmm. And uh, she decided to adopt 13 different children. 13 kids. 13 wow. kids <laughs> from That's all around the world. Mm -hmm. And she created what she called uh, the Rainbow Tribute. Okay. Uh, here in the Chateau des Nulandes. Okay. And uh, in the 1960s, she had um, money problems because she was just so generous. She was just throwing big parties and taking care of her, of her kids. She had big money problems, so she decided to go back on stage. Mm -hmm. But this wasn't enough. Okay. And basically, um, she was... Um, 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 the, the, system of justice yeah. moved her from her castle. Oh, she was expelled. She was expelled exactly from yeah. her castle. Oh, and there is sad. this terrible picture of her mm. sitting by her castle because she didn't want to leave it. That's so um, sad. And she's a hero. And she's she made she's so just much a hero. Friends, she's so. just so generous. Yeah. She's like the really perfect sad. lady. She's like okay. a national hero. Mm. And her life ended tragically. Yeah. Well. So yeah. For the people who doesn't know Josephine Baker, you have to check on her. She's, yeah, she yeah. Like, she's, she's, she's a badass. A <laughs> you want to go this way? Oh yeah. You guys? Okay. So we have the panoramic, panoramic view on the church. Sure. It's so funny because there is no one here now. Looks like we're getting back on time. 
Oh, it's got a Maybe we're going to see ghosts. No, no, don't tell them. <laughs> <laughs> I, did, I did the dark tour with Raphael. That was another tour um, in Paris because we're doing that every week, like most of the people know that. And, um, and actually, yeah, if you want to support us, that will be the great time to tip, you know, your guide. Uh, also to like the video, to share it with friends. Uh, so we're going to continue doing those type of video every week if you like them, of course. And um, yeah, so are we going that way now? Oh, it's closed. Oh, okay. Oh. Sorry. <laughs> okay, I so wanted to show you something here, but, it, but, but it's closed it now. To be okay, closed, doesn't so matter. So it's called it's a, a long time demo. So it looks yeah. like a, like a dead story. So we're going for the from next, from maybe for there. the next time. Then. We can see it from down there, actually. We can see it from yeah. there. Okay, that's good. So yeah. So Alex, are you thinking about staying a little bit here for the the end of the summer? Yeah, I think so because there's just so many things to to discover. Yeah. And I'm actually working on new tours around here. Okay. So, so what type of tour do you want to show? I've been preparing tours in Paris, but now I want to start something fresh here. Okay. So as my favorite period in history is the Middle Ages, I think I'm going to work a lot on all the medieval castles we've got around here mm -hmm. and their connections. Okay. Because there's a lot to say, and as I was telling you, there used to be English strongholds fighting French ones okay and um, there is this very uh, iconic story here in Dordogne because there were those two strongholds Castelnau and Beignac who were very close they're like three kilometers away mm -hmm. and one was English and the other one was French and they were fighting all and the they time. were fighting during the hundred years war okay so you have to imagine that during a hundred and sixteen years okay. they were fighting okay Whatever, so that's why we're saying that the English are not our best friends <laughs> because of those two castles. We fighting. still love them, but <laughs> yeah, of course, of course we love them. <laughs> okay, and so, um, so you say you were a guide in the Castelnau, so we we have to do a tour there. I mean, I mean, if you want, anytime. Yeah. Okay. So okay, we're gonna have to plan that. Um, okay, so we should go that way then. Yeah. See the. Hello. Ah. Yeah, it's beautiful. Of course it is. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, this is what I want to show you guys. This is what we call in French La Lanterne des Morts. So the, the tower that we see in the background. In English we would say the dead lantern. Mm -hmm. And this is a very mysterious building even nowadays. Why? Because we don't know exactly. what it was meant for. But with the name... So death. it's called the Death Lantern. Yeah. So the first explanation would be as this church was a site of pilgrimage, mm -hmm. and as uh, in the Middle Ages there was no light, we would tend to say that there were lights inside the tower. You can see there was um, very I tiny see, windows. I see, yeah, I see the little hole here. Yeah. And this was a sort of a lighthouse for the pilgrims not to get lost in ah. the city. So they can find their way back to the church mm. if they're just moving around, something like that. But it's still very mysterious because um, nowadays we don't have any lights. And uh, we can also think it's a sort of uh, grave for some... A grave, you think? What? Yeah, a tomb okay. for some uh, VIP person in Sala. Yeah. Oh. Because we have actually a grave down there. Okay, so, in, so inside of inside the, the, the tower. tower. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So it's still yeah, very mysterious because there are two opposite explanations and we don't know which one to choose. Oh. You know what okay. I mean? Yeah, that's very mysterious because yeah, you would think like for the pilgrimage, maybe you can just put a lantern somewhere on the church. But to, yeah, why to, build to, a specific to tower actually, yeah, for have that? A tower that means something probably bigger than that. Or and also it's remind me like maybe it's uh, in Game of Thrones. I think you know they have those lantern on the top of mountain. Yeah, there, they that's just right. Have one it's flame. in the Lord of the Rings. Oh, in the Lord of the Rings. Oh, sorry. <laughs> 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 like one flame, then another flame, and then another flame. It kind of looks like that. Like like just yeah, burning flame, right. and then it's just like yeah. kind of a code or something. Um, okay, but that's that's very interesting. That's very different from anything I saw before. So it's, and uh, uh, yeah, as we are reaching uh, kind of the end of the tour, yeah. I want to tell you the darkest story that I know. Okay, here. Okay, are just, you ready? Just just a few. Okay. <laughs> so we are right by the biggest church of Sala mm -hmm. that I was uh, that you got introduced to at yeah. the beginning of the tour. Uh -huh. And here in Sala, as I told you, this was at first a religious city. Okay. So basically, the power was in the end of the, the abbey. Mm -hmm. Abbey. And uh, as the city grew bigger and bigger, there were more and more craftsmen, merchants, and common people yeah. that came here to live. Okay. And as there were more and more people, the church was kind of losing power because they were less important in numbers. Mm -hmm. 
and the people all around the church wanted to have their own power. Okay. So there was this sort of fight between the church and the laics mm -hmm. to know who is going to have the power. Of course. Because money is power, yeah. so we need to know who is going to charge yeah. the taxes. Of course. Okay? So the church wanted to take all the taxes mm -hmm. and the people from the town and the people from the town wanted also to have the taxes and it was so so um, such, such a big question that the abbe of Sala got attacked during the mass and he was shot with a crossbow. What? He was doing the mass. In the middle of the mass. Like in the middle of the like mass. Shot the, the bishop, he was not doing the, the mass yeah. and someone just stood up and shot him with a crossbow. Okay. And we still don't and, know and just nowadays. Well, of it just course. got killed. Yeah. Okay. Of course. <laughs> and we still don't know nowadays who did it. Okay. So we don't know if it's a people from the village yeah. who would be angry at the, at the monk for yeah, raising the taxes. For, for whatever reason, or yeah. someone from inside the church who uh. didn't agree on the way the abbe was uh, taking charge but, of the taxes. But, but was he stealing really money, the abbe? Or just misusing the it. money? We don't know. Okay. It's just a, a problem of power. Okay. Okay, so they are kind of like rebuild here. Yeah. Coming in a mass and, with a crossbow. And even the <laughs> king of France uh, got involved in the affair and uh -huh. managed to, the, um, the church and the people living here to sign a book of peace. Oh. King Philippe, Philippe Le Bel in the beginning of the 14th century yeah. managed to find a solution by forcing them to sign the peace. Okay. But it went to murder to find a solution. Oh, wow. Okay. They're pretty intense. So this intense. is the darkest story. Yeah, yeah they're very intense. <laughs> okay, well, well. Okay, so be careful if you go to a mass <laughs> here. Okay, but I love it. But thank you so much, Alex. Like, yeah, no problem. So I think we should. I love it. We need to yeah. go back to the front of the church. Of course. Because it's the most beautiful spot. It's so great. So, um, yeah. So, do you think it's very touristy? Like, for example, you say for the summer time, of course, people are coming here. But is it very crowded? I can't really. Yeah. yeah? So, very as I was crowded. telling you, people, there are. 10,000 people living in Sala yeah. during the whole year. And in summer, we have more than 7,300 people okay. coming here. Okay, okay. So that's. Uh, so it's multiplied by seven, basically. Yeah. The number of people living in the. But, in like, Sala. but like you say, it's kind of manageable. Like if you want to be in the crowd, you can be yeah. in the center, but if you also want to explore, you because can. Because people are mostly coming here for the marketplace. Okay. Okay. And also, even if they come here in Sala, they move all around to visit all the castles and the caves and they go to Canon River. That, that sounds really fun to do, like uh, just a little day yeah. doing different things, different atmosphere. If you're coming with me, maybe I'll take you on a trip. Yeah? Oh, yeah, yeah. let's do Does that. You like that. Okay, so Canon and, um, and the castle, Castel No, that's a lot of things to do. Yeah. So, well, thank you so much no for problem. It was my uh, pleasure. Just, just making us discover more of your of your region and uh, and and the city of Sahala, and uh, maybe uh, yeah, maybe we're gonna do another visit very soon. Yeah, then. I wish. Well, thank you very much for watching us. Uh, see you maybe next week for the one who are following us every week. Thank you so much. You can tip Alexandre, your guy for tonight. You can just put the thumb up on the video. You can share it uh, and just uh, yeah, add us on Facebook, on Instagram. Just follow us and we're going to talk more about everything in France that is marvelous to discover. So thank you again. Thank you for coming. Bye bye. Bye and thank guys. Thank you all. Ciao.